Tonight I want to speak to you briefly on this topic called One with a Difference. Amen. How many of you guys believe that you are, you are made, you are on this earth to make a difference in somebody's lives, in your family, you know, in our culture, in the music world, in the sports world, in the fashion world. So how many say here, you know, I'm going to make a difference in some place. Amen. Come on. Yeah. And uh, things about, you know, living a lifestyle with a difference. Living a lifestyle where you're going to impact and change somebody's lives requires doing something different than everybody else. Amen? It's like, you know, only dead fish swim with the currents. The live fish, they swim up the current. They, they do different things. It's not easy. It's not fun. You know, you get called names. You mess up. You, you sometimes stand for something and everybody laughs at you. And you're like, man, why am I standing for this? Why am I talking about this? But then it comes a time where, where you stand for a difference begins to make a change. Amen, church? And that is what Hunger Generation family, our church, we're believing that we're going to make a difference in our city. Amen, church? We're going to see thousands on altar call come up during the service amen we're gonna see incurable diseases like this man in the wheelchair they took him out just from the hospital they brought him to that crusade just with the ambulance as he got up and the man of God will begin to pray for him this is a place where I, where we are heading amen church we're gonna see the most incurable diseases being healed in this place you know the deaf ears being opened the blind eyes being able to see the people in wheelchairs people with cancer receive the full clean bill of health in Jesus mighty name if you believe that put your hands together for Jesus one with a difference somebody say one with a difference uh, there's certain things you know in this day and age in this culture there's a lot of things that the whole uh, people do, you know, as a, there's certain things that everybody follows, these rules, what to say, how to, how to dress, how to look. This is how you get accepted. This is, you know, what you should not do because if you do these things, you are called weird. You are, you know, just an outcast. You are going to be eating alone. Nobody's going to like you. They're going to laugh at you. But many times those are the people that make a difference in our culture. Amen, church? As you've seen and as you look at people who were made in life, who became great, who made an impact on their generation, they did something different from everybody else. Amen? And that is what I want to talk to you about. In so there's two words. There's an instinct and distinct. Somebody say instinct and distinct. I want you to put up the meaning. The instinct is a natural behavior you are born with. And distinct, if you want to write this down, is choosing to be different there is a natural way of you know growing up being in school as a teenager as a young person as what people do they get high they smoke they drink they go to parties that is the instinct way you don't need to you know, many times you don't even need to teach them that they already know how to do it you know I went as a little kid how do they know how to lie it's like, who taught you to lie? It's like, did you do this? They're like, no, I didn't do it. This is a dog. And I was like, you're a liar. I know you did it, you know? You know, like an instinct, you know, when nobody teaches a baby to cry, right? They just come out screaming and crying. That's an instinct way. But there is a distinct way where somebody chooses to be different. Amen, church? In system of this world is a system that is going on this path and on its way to hell. A system of this world is do what you want. You know, uh, uh, party as hard as you can when you're young. Enjoy your teen years. Go and uh, sleep around. You know, just care about get high, drunk. Do whatever you want. And that is, you know, the, this culture of that, way that we are living in. But in order for you to be different, in order to you make a difference, you have to choose to be different. Even though you might stand out, even though you might be called prude, even though you might be called weird, even though you might be called a church boy or even call, be called a Jesus freak, if you want to make a difference, you have to choose to be different. Many times I see people that, you know, they are afraid, they're scared, they have this fear. What will people say? What, how are they going to look at me? But, but at the end of the day, it's the people, the, the major crowd, the, the, the general people, the, 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 the current of people, they're looking for somebody to stand out and to lead away. 
They're always looking like, who can show us how to live a right life? I know there's parties. I know there's drinking. But I try that and I'm, and I'm empty and I'm looking for somebody to stand out to show me how to live a different life. We have to make a choice to be different. We, we, we are born with, with, a, with a sinful nature, with a nature that wants to fit in, with a nature that the one that takes it easy, the nature that wants to enjoy itself, the nature that, that wants to do all it wants for itself. But in order for Jesus to make a difference, he had to stand out. He had to be different. He was called names. He was rejected. He was lied against. He was, he was persecuted. But he was the one person that was able to change the world. Amen, church? We have to understand something. That if you want to make a difference in your family, that you are not too small. You are not too insignificant. You are not, you know, even if you had mistakes, even that if you have a past, you are not, you know, too broken to make a difference in your family. You're not too, too shattered to make a difference in your culture. You're not too, too, too messed up to make a difference in your school. You just have to make a choice to say that I'm going against this current of this, of this world. I'm going to go the, against this current of partying around. I'm going to go against this current of cussing, of dating before marriage is just going and trying everything before I choose the right one. You have to make a choice that I'm going to stand out and I'm going to make a difference. Difference. Amen church. Somebody tell your neighbor you're not too small to make a difference. Look, look, look at your other neighbor and, and, and look at him in the eye tell him you are not too small to make a difference. Amen. You have to tell it to yourself that I, I refuse to be stuck when other people are making a difference. You know that right now in this in this day and age the biggest influence to our world are brought by young people. If you look at social media, who's changing social media right now? Isn't it the young people? Young people are leading the way. The, the, so many young millionaires and billionaires are rising up out of not people who are, are educated, actually out of school dropouts. People who didn't finish college and then they're like, oh, I'm going to drop out. Why? I want to make a difference. No, just first get your grades up and get a mind and then you can drop out. <laughs> no, don't drop out. Stay in school. But just to tell you that certain the people that are making waves in our generation are unqualified. If you look at them, you, you, you see them, they are unqualified. They're the ones that have a past. They're the ones that have issues, but they're the ones that made a choice that you know what? I am tired of living the life the same way. I want to make a difference in my finances. I want to make a difference in my health. I want to make a difference in my family tree. I want to stand out. Why? Because I am tired to be stuck when everybody else is moving forward. It is the young people right now. If you look at the athletes right now, the second and the highest paid, uh, you know, Neymar, he's, he's like the second highest paid athlete in the world. And he's just, he's just a young man. Why? Because he chose to be different. What makes you any different than the people who made history? It's not that you have to be, you know, educated, you have to be, you know, experienced, you have to have this. You just have to make a choice that, you know what, I'm tired of seeing divorce in my family. I'm going to make a difference in that area of marriage and relationships. You have to say, you know what, I'm tired of seeing cancer ruin my family. I'm going to be the one that's going to make a difference. I'm going to believe that Jesus Christ is my healer, whether he heals me or not. And that, that, that cancer is going to stop with me. I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make a difference in my family when it comes to college, when it comes to opening a business, when it comes to having respect and popularity in music and sport, that you have to make that choice to say, you know what, I'm tired of fitting in. I'm going to be standing out. Amen, church? Many times we, we, we begin to mix uh, who we are and what we are. Why don't let me explain to you about that. Many times when people see like and um, seeing, you know, an athlete and they're like, oh, wow, he's an awesome soccer player. You know, I want to be like him. You should never be, be jealous of, of what people are, but of who they are. It's you have to always wanting to have their character instead of the gift that God has given them. Because we have to understand that gift will take you so far, but character will keep you there gift will take you so far but character 
will keep you there. We've seen many people who, you know, uh, you know they, they're skillful in one area. Or even we've seen in the basketball, uh, basketball world where the gifts begin to take them so far. They earn millions. They become stars. But yet they cannot keep their millions because their character, the way they are, ruins their life. They begin to spend, you know, money on things that they don't need. They buy things, you know, the, 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 you know, just to please themselves. And sooner or later, they begin to work, you know, at McDonald's. And there's actually one NBA star that, you know, the, uh, the signed with, I think it was with Celtics, something like that. In like four or five years, he said he lost everything. And he was so embarrassed that he had to go work at McDonald's because he didn't have enough money to supply for his kids. Talent and gift will take you so far, but character will only keep you there. First point I want to talk to you guys about is when you want to make a difference, you have to concentrate on manners. Somebody say manners. Manners are, are, are one thing is that bad manners retards one's progress. I like that word, retards. It, it withholds, corrupts. So, so bad manners corrupt good behavior. We have to understand that God will bless you. We have to understand that part. God is a faithful God. God will give you a time in your life where God will, will bring a breakthrough in your life, will bring that relationship that you're praying for, will bring you that health. But if you do not have manners, if you do not have that, that character, you will not be able to maintain it. You will not be able to maintain it. Your, your, your manners, how, how are you with your temper? How are you when it comes to talking? How are you when it comes to, you know, your punctuality? How are you when it comes to, you know, when somebody comes, uh, comes to you and tells you you're a fool? How do you respond to that? Your manners. You know, when, when Jesus begins to say, God begins to say that David is a man after my own heart. What he meant was by that is that David has the manners. He has the, the character and the heart of God. That when Saul begins to, to chase him, wants to kill him, and you know, and Saul comes into the same cave as David was. And David, when he saw him, and he had a chance to wipe away everything from Saul's life. But he said, you know, I will never raise my hand against the anointed one. He had manners. He had the dignity. He had the, the, the thing to say, you know what, God has put him in a place and God's going to be the one to remove him. I have manners. I have character. I'm not going to be repaying somebody's evil. I'm not going to be begin to, to, to uh, somebody, you know, did me bad. I'm not going to repay bad with bad. I'm going to repay bad with good. How's, how's your manners? You know, we know many people who begin to rise up in life. But then when you look at them, look at that character, it's just, it's so bad. that It's just a matter of time that the character begins to decay and the gifts begins to withdraw from them. You know, just because God has given you a talent doesn't mean you are, you know, that that's the only thing that's holding you. Your character has to be that, you know, if I have this talent or I don't have this talent, you shouldn't respect me because of my talent, but because of who I am. Amen, church? You shouldn't look at me and begin to, 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 uh, to praise me because God is using me, using me in the gift of healing or the gift of prophecy or because, you know, I can play the piano good. I have, you know, a good, you know, a drumming skills or I can make you laugh. You shouldn't respect me towards that. You shouldn't honor me towards that. But by my character that God has given me. Amen, church? Your manners, you have to build that. Your manners are not built in the good times, but it's built in the tough times when you begin to serve. When you begin to do things that you do not like. When your parents begin to tell you, hey, clean your room. Like, who do you think you are? You know, go to school. You know how many millions dropped out of school? And, you know, you begin to build this thing. But, but you know, even if you get a million dollars, nobody's going to want to be around you. Why? Because your character stinks. That's what we have to understand. God will always bless you. And God will give you times and seasons in your life where the blessing will come through. But if you cannot maintain it, the blessing will turn into curse. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Your character has to be the things that, that draws people, not your money. Your character has to be the thing that persuades and shows people that you got Christ living you. Not the car that you drive. Not the looks that you have because it only takes one unfortunate incident and that all can be wiped away. How you talk, how you associate with people. You know, some people who talk so many miles a minute is just insane you know in just a minute you know their mom's name their name the grandfather's name and everything about them but it's, it's just manners that the god is looking for people that will begin to build through that and how you build manners is through serving 
I want to challenge people. You know, we have host groups. I want to challenge people. We have places in, in usher team. We have, we have uh, you know, nursery. We have Sunday school where you can build your character. And through that, you can see that God can elevate you. You know that, um, what's the billionaire that was working at a church at a nursery? I forget his name. So remember that? Zach, you preached about it. Forgot too. Rockefeller. Rockefeller, as he was the richest man, you know, at, at his time, still had the time to come back and never miss a Sunday church because he was serving at a Sunday school. That is, that is manners. That is to show that I'm not too high. I'm not too elevated, you know, to, to be able to serve just because I got a gift. If somebody sees you and says, oh, no, he shouldn't be doing that. Why? Well, because he's up there. No, you have to have the, the character of Jesus Christ. Well, right before his greatest mission, say, you know what? I'm going to wash you guys' feet. I'm going to begin to serve you. Why? To show you that if you want to be up top, you have to conquer and get a PhD at serving. You got to get a PhD. You got to, to master the gift of loving people. The mastering gift of, you know, serving people. When everybody says, give up on that person, but you have the love and the compassion. So you know what? I want to see till they succeed. Amen, church? You know, um, I've helped about seven or eight people at church already, um, I think, uh, to get a driver's license. And some of them killed me almost. Others, I gave up on life, called on to Jesus, say, you know, I'm ready. <laughs> And others, you know, they're just like, you know, I'm proud of myself. And sometimes, and some people came up to me and say, hey, you know what, just how long can you do this for that person? You know, it's not working out, things like that. And, and for me it was, you know, I'm like, if I can do and pour out my love for the least of them, I made God happy. When God looks at me, you know, not before men, because I know before men, if people like, I'm like, oh, you know, that person was succeeding in that area. Oh, that person achieved this goal. They're like, oh, who cares? But I know before God, when I stand before God, I can say, you know, God, with the least, I made the best. God is proud. And that is what, when you want to make a difference, it's not the high places that you should be looking for. Is if you can graduate the low places of their life. Why David was named the man after God's own heart because in the cave where everybody didn't see where he could took revenge on Saul and wipe him out simply he said I will never raise my hand against the anointed one. He had the the manners and the characters to say and to begin to honor God to say that you know in the darkest times the lowest point of my life I'll still be faithful I'll still be true to God you know when everybody else is partying around on Friday night I'll be battling for my city you know on morning prayers when nobody and nobody else is here I'm going to be here praying you know on Sunday school when everybody else is up there I'm going to be serving in ministry in, in Sunday school ministry I believe God's going to raise somebody mighty from Sunday school ministry I'm going to be in the usher team I'm going to be you know doing this I'm going to have my own host group with the people nobody cares about I want to reach out and I want to love them and that's the kind of heart that God is looking for amen church somebody say manners number two develop the do's and the don'ts somebody say develop the do's and the don'ts. Many times because we do not have the do's and the don'ts, we find ourselves in the awkward situations. Have you guys ever found yourself in the situation like, how did I get here? And you can't say no and you can't say yes because both of them makes you look bad, you know? You're like in that situation like, oh, crap, man. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, they're going to hate me. But if I say no, they're going to be mad at me. So I lose in both worlds. And you're like, oh, I'm just going to go along with it. And you find yourself in a situation where, where you cannot get out. It's simply because you do not have the do's and you, have, you don't have the don'ts. I know some, some guys are like, well, why is, you know, uh, drinking not bad. Why is drinking bad? You know, it says that only if you get drunk, you know, so if I take a sip or two, you know, it's not bad. But then you find yourself in an awkward situation where you had a little bit too much and you got a DUI and you're like, how did I get myself here? Well, because you didn't have the do's and the don'ts. You know, you caught yourself first time lying one time. You're like, well, it's a small lie. But then you find yourself in a situation where it's such a big lie that, that jeopardizes your character, what you stand for. And you're like, well, I can't now say that I'm lying because now everybody's going to think I'm a liar and going to ruin everything. It's because you don't have the do's and then you don't have the don'ts. There's certain things you got to tell yourself, I will not go to parties. Simply why? Because I'll find myself in a situation I can't get out of. I don't want to go, you know, I'd rather go to a night while I'll, I'll be battling for my city. I'm not going to even be, have a chance to be tempted. 
Some people are like, I'm always tempted. The devil's after me. He's chasing me. I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, my friends are smoking. I'm just, I feel I have the urge. I'm like, well, come to night prayer. Nobody's smoking here. Everybody's high in the spirit. So you will, you will get addicted to something else and you won't have to battle the addiction. So you don't have the do's and don'ts. You don't have the clear lines of to say no and when to say yes. When there's, you know, the pastor says, no, I need you to serve in this area. I need you to do in this area. And you're like, well, you know, if I have the time, I'll say yes. I'll serve on Wednesday to the youth if I'll get out of work on time. You just can't say yes or no. You're just in the middle. Sooner or later, you find yourself in the time that you won't have time to go Wednesdays and to Sundays. Dedication is just a choice. That's it. It's just a choice. You choose to be dedicated in that, in, in that area. And you have to understand, if you say that, you know what, if my friends are going to be going to a party, I'm just not going there. I'm not going to be, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'll, I'll try to slip in uh, some gospel while they're drunk. Or, <laughs> you know, I'm going to try to witness to them while they're, you know, high. It's not going to work like that. Evangelism happens on Sundays, not on a Friday night at the club, just so you know. And that's something you have to understand. You have to, you clearly have to outline your do's and your don'ts. What can you do? When it comes to, for guys, when it comes to texting, you know, texting girls, you have to, you have to make, it, make a decision for yourself. I'm talking to, to young teens, for those who are, in, uh, who are not, still not in a relationship. Develop the do's and the don'ts. Don't find yourself in such a position, awkward position, that you're like, how did I get here? Because you did not have a do and you did not have a don't for your life. Amen? Many times I remember when I was in, uh, uh, when I was in high school, long time ago um i remember one person came up to me and said hey, why aren't you not going uh this one they had a party like hey why didn't you want to go uh to this party with us you know you're always lame you know you're you know i'm gonna introduce you to the real life and actually i think a few days ago he was the one that came to um came to buy a car and i saw him he's like oh weren't you that that guy at school i remember you you know, and I looked at his life, and I'm like, yeah, I was that guy. He's like, well, how did, you, how did you get here? How did you have all this? How did you get here? And I, I literally, this is exactly what I told him. I said, it's because of the things I didn't do that you did. And we were, we were, we were, we were good friends then, but then like eight years, eight years passed, and we, we didn't have that communication. So, and I'm like, there's certain things that you did do, and there's certain things I didn't do, and that will outline your tomorrow. Your, whatever you decide to do will not change it today, but it will change tomorrow. You might not see, see it in this season, but the season that is coming, you'll be able to see the reward. Amen, church? You can only be greater tomorrow if you be a better person today. Only a better person today influences, influences us greater tomorrow. Amen, church? People who prepare their now, people who prepare their now, their, their today moment that can only be something great then only who prepare their now can be something great then we have to understand with that being different is hard making a difference in your generation standing and praying for souls you know when other people are, are, are doing nonsense out there to be able to believe for healing when everybody says you know you're crazy God doesn't heal you know look so many people died there you know this this doesn't work to be able to stand to believe for that today will make you greater tomorrow you might not see the results today you might not see the immediate situation take place today but because of your choices that you do now will influence tomorrow we live in the generation that want, that's like, that they want like, like my hot pockets. One and a half minutes, that's way too long. I want it a minute. That's as long as I'm giving the hot pocket. If it comes out cold, I'm like, I'm mad. My wife is like, it's two minutes and ten seconds. I'm like, return it. I don't like this thing. It's too slow. <laughs> I, I want it now. I'm telling you. I'm like, I go somewhere. I'm like, you know, sometimes I drive and I eat. You know, that's how I'm like, I get in there. If, if they're taking their time, I'm like, babe. 20% tip is just went down to 10 and if they came they don't give me refill I'm like this is five and then if they don't do something else I'm like that's it no tips for them I want everything now but we have to understand that that's not how God works God begins to speak things into existence and as it comes it begins to happen in your life if you want to begin to make a difference in your family some people are like man I'm tired of my family you know they, they're always broke they're always these things and and you yourself are spending money on the things that you do not need you just want them that's not going to make a difference 
While everybody spending, learn to invest. While everybody's partying around, learn how to build yourself. Great people are not the people who have, you know, big resources. They just have a, a, a great a, a mind that has full of resources. Rich people are not who are surrounded with great, you know, monies. They, they have a great mind. They have, a, they have much resources in their mind. Take away the millions. Sooner or later, they'll gain it, gain it back. Take away a million. For, give, a, give a million to a poor person. Give it time, you'll still be a poor person. Why? Because of their mind. You have to begin to invest in yourself. You got to begin to create a do and a don't in my life. You begin to say, you know what? Well, everybody else is wasting their time. I'm going to invest my time into knowledge. Now, nowadays, knowledge is basically everywhere. It's free. You can learn things. You can learn how to cook, learn how to speak for free on YouTube, Google, whatever it is. It's, it's literally, it's that, it's that available information for us is, is free right now. It's available everywhere. You can be able to make a difference in your world only if you choose and you make a choice that I'm going to make a difference in my family. Amen, church? And the last, last person, uh, last uh, point is developing principles. Developing principles. And the scripture from 1 John 2.13, if we can put up the scripture, it says this. I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who's from the beginning. I am writing to you. And this is what he says. Young men, because you have overcome the evil one. Young men, because you have overcome the evil one. He's speaking to the young generation. He says, you have overcome the evil one. How? By making a choice. Of knowing who you are in Christ Jesus, you are able to overcome the calamities of this world. And in, in Daniel 1.8, and this scripture I really like, and says this, that, But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested the prince of the Enoch's that he might not defile himself. But Daniel proposed in his heart. It's a choice that Daniel begins to make to stand out. And only then Daniel was able to shake the kingdom that he was in. Daniel was, was a small boy. Daniel was, was, was basically a nobody. And to begin to influence a kingdom, it's like saying you right now, you, as insignificant, small that we think that we are, by making a choice to influence the presidential uh, place. That's, that, that's who he was. But because he proposed, he made a decision in his heart to make a difference. God began to honor that and begin to elevate him. Number three is a developing principle. Begin to set up a guidelines for your life. That this is the rules and regulations I'm going to live. Develop, begin to develop the guidelines of, you know what, nothing comes before God. The Bible is my guideline the, and the Holy Spirit is, is my reference. That is your principle that you should live by. Not what my parents is going to say. Not what my co-workers are thinking of me. Not what my friends are saying. But the guidelines that you live by, the same God. You, I'm putting you ahead of everyone. I know my family might not understand it now, but I'm trusting and I'm believing you. You know, my, my wife is coming out of a Catholic background. She made, a, she made a principle by her life, in her, in her own life, that you know what? I'm going to stand for what I believe, even though in the beginning they didn't support it. And today the whole, the whole family tree is being influenced by one decision. Decision, not, not a great act, but a decision. Some of you are coming out, out, of, out of a different religious background. You say, you know what? You might be even this, in this place, you might be even hiding because they're like, oh, well, my parents don't even know that I'm here. Your decision will make a difference in your family tree. Some of you might be coming out of a, out of a poor background where, where things, you never had enough. You never started. You didn't even know what business is. You didn't even know how to spell business. You know, anything you look at your bank account, it's always negative withdrawal fees. And, a, and NSF, that's your middle name. You know, a not sufficient account or whatever it means, you know. And, but you have to make a difference in your life. While everybody's spending their money, I'm going to learn how to invest. When everybody's buying, you know, nice cars and all these nice clothes, I'm going to learn a thing or two about money because I want to make a difference in my life because one day I believe I'll be known by my giving than my receiving. You know, one of the things that, and one of the principles in my life that um, 
that I live by is that never give up. Never give up, doesn't matter how bad, how hard does it get. Just keep fighting, keep going forward. You know, one thing that I knew in that, that God is faithful. God is faithful. God will always and always bring you through. Doesn't matter how hard things might get with relationships, how hard things might get with, with finances, how hard that things will get with your health. Make a principle that God is by my side and if He's not giving up on me, I'm not giving up on myself. Make a principle and a guideline for yourself that, you know, I'm not going to betray God, my relationship with God for anything. If there's any relationships, guys, girls, that come popularity, job offers, I'm going to stick to God through thick or through thin. Let that be your guideline that you live by. For me, it was, you know, Wednesday, Sundays, I'm going to serve. Till this day, till this day, I come and I, I'm like, if I sit down and I'm not doing nothing in the service, I feel weird. I feel like a sinner first time coming. I feel like Vladimir's like, come up, son. God is calling you. <laughs> I chose to, to serve God till, till the day I die that I'm going to pour out my heart to the people that nobody cares about. I'm going to serve them. If I not, might not be standing here holding the mic, I'm going to pray for someone. I might assist somebody with finances. I'm going to help somebody with support, with encouragement. But till the day I die, I'm going to stand with God and know that God is my everything. That's a principle that I live by. And I'll tell you one thing, church. God is faithful. God is faithful. Not because, not because I've been faithful, but, I, but through the thick or thin, I said, God, you know, I'm sticking with you. I'm sticking with you. I want us to be, to, to be a people that, that will begin to look at us, at yourself, and begin to say, I'm not too small to make a difference in my family. And just be tired of normal. Be tired of average. Be tired of brokenness. Be tired of just, you know, things falling apart. And begin to cry out that, God, I want to make a difference in my generation. And God it will tell you this, that I'm not looking for perfect, but available. Just that available. Those that say, God, I'm ready to use me. And it took a man like David, who was young, rustic, unexperienced with sheep, one day, somehow that when he said no god i'm available for you to use me whatever area that i always serve ship here ship here but i'll go out and i'll battle with the goliath tomorrow and after even he defeated goliath he still went back to the sheep to serve why because he said i'm not too big and i'm not too small for any position but god i'm available to make a difference amen thank you for watching this content i hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.